Welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us for this very special event celebrating Israel's 73rd birthday. Tonight's program is brought to you by the Sephardic Community Center and APAC. We have partnered tonight with many community schools and institutions that have something very special in common, a love and commitment to strengthening our relationship as Americans to our eternal home, Israel. Thank you to the SCA, CSN, Mag and David Yeshiva, Barakai Yeshiva, Hillel Yeshiva, I Lead, United Hatzalah, the Allegra Franco Women's Bet Midrash, and Moresha Yerushalayim for joining with us tonight. This community-wide event would not have been possible without the support of our generous sponsors, Z and Meirav Dweck, whose dedication to Israel and bringing unique events to our community are unparalleled. A huge thank you to Mr. Joe Jerome, Mr. Elliot Brandt, Aaron Herman and his team from APAC, Victor Dweck, Gail Shrem, Richie Shalme and Joe Gindi of RJ2, Greta Schwartz and the center staff. This event would not have been possible without the vision and leadership of Ricky Novick, the chairman of the board of the center, who is devoted to our community as he is to Israel and is always finding unique ways to bring the two closer together. A little over a year ago, the world as we knew it changed forever. We faced many challenges and grave losses, but we learned a lot about ourselves and our capabilities. And now finally, as a light at the end of the dark tunnel is getting a little brighter, the state of Israel has set an example for the world and America to learn from. Once again, Israel is fulfilling its role and shining her light onto the world. As a leader in vaccine distribution, medicine and technology, and in its role collecting and sharing data with the world, Israel has shown once again, she may be small, but her impact is always mighty. When we read Israel's amazing vaccination statistics as American Jews, we are filled with a sense of overwhelming pride, but none of us are surprised. We know Israel is an innovator and a world leader. We know Israel is always the first to help other countries in times of disasters. And we knew Israel would find a way to once again face a seemingly insurmountable foe and come out victorious. Tonight is all about celebrating Israel and our community's unique relationship to her. Thank you again for joining us. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. אני אוהב אותך באמת היית אימא הכי מדהימה בעולם יותר ממה שאפשר לבקש לא רציתי להדאיג אותך מהכניסה לעזה או משהו בבקשה תהיי חזקה בשבילי ואם יקרה לי משהו, תחייכי בגאווה, אני אוהב אותך, אוהב אותך, אוהב אותך, אוהב אותך, אוהב אותך, אוהב אותך. אבא, היית אבא נפלא באמת. אבא, גבר, גבר, למרות שרבנו בחודש האחרון, אל תייחס לזה משמעות, אני אוהב אותך, אוהב אותך, אוהב אותך, אוהב אותך, אוהב אותך. אוהב אותך, אהבת שלא תתגעגעו אליי, כי אני שמח שנפלה בחלקי הזכות ליפול למען המדינה שלי. אני אוהב אותה, אוהב אותה, 
אוהב אותה. אוהב אותה, אוהב אותה, אוהב אותה. אז אם אתם קוראים את המכתבים, כנראה שהלכתי לישון. לילה טוב, שון. Yom HaZikaron throughout Israel, a siren blares to honor those who have fallen defending the state of Israel. Please rise to honor those heroes. ביום שישי, ה' באייר תש"ח, 14 במאי 1948, אחר הצהריים, באו המוזמנים אל בניין מוזיאום תל אביב בשדרות רוטשילד 16. הם התבקשו לשמור את סיבת ההזמנה, טקס הכרזת העצמאות, בסוד. אבל בבואם מצאו את חצי העיר ממתינה להם. סמוך לשעה ארבע, הגיע דוד בן גוריון. כל חייו היו מסע אל הרגע הזה. זוהי זכותו הטבעית של העם היהודי להיות ככל עם ועם עומד ברשות עצמו במדינתו הריבונית אשר תפתח לרווחה את שערי המולדת לכל יהודי ותעניק לעם היהודי ממד של אומה שוות זכיות בסוף העמים. לפיכך נתכנסנו, אנו חברי מועצת העם, נציגי היישוב העברי והתנועה הציונית, ביום סיום המנדט הבריטי על ארץ ישראל. ותוקף זכותנו הטבעית וההיסטורית ועל יסוד החלטת עשרת האומות המוחדות אנו מכריזים בזאת על הקמת מדינה יהודית בארץ ישראל היא מדינת ישראל ברוך אתה, אדוני, שיהיה מזה לעולם, שהחיינו והתאמנו והגענו לזמן הזה. What an exciting evening. Tonight we are honoring seven pairs of visionaries, men and women, that saw a void and imagined a new and different path. They saw a need and set out to make a change. Not only did these people dream big, but equally, if not more importantly, they, they are men and women of action. They fulfilled their dreams and they stuck with them. They created organizations. They inspired others. They changed our community. And because of them, our collective bond with the state of Israel has grown so much closer. They are at the forefront of our community's Zionistic endeavors. They are people whose names come to mind when we think of Israel and our bond to the Holy Land. Tonight, the center and APAC are honoring these pairs along with 10 other partnering institutions 
many of which were founded and formed by the men and women we are about to hear from. Congratulations to the honorees. Back in 2014, I had an idea after working for over 20 years in Magen David Yeshiva and understanding and looking at the needs of our students and understanding how important it is for our students to spend a one year in Israel studying after high school. And I realized that there was a lack of options for our students and they needed a special unique program that would cater to their needs and that also would understand how important it is to connect our students to the land of Israel and understanding that the modern day state of Israel is a gift from God and a true miracle in this century. After receiving that memorable phone call from Rabbi Harold Sutton, my partner and dear friend, I said, Rabbi, your concept of the gap year, we're going to make history and we're going to refer it as the bridge. It's the bridge to opportunity. It's the bridge to the love of Israel in a higher dynamic. And what do we mean? Rabbi, would you agree if the boys, the young men, would work and intern in startups because we had finished the book Startup Nation? And the rabbi agreed. He said three days a week, a half a day, each day they can work and of course learn. One of the things that makes Moreshit a really unique experience of learning in Israel is the tremendous experience and rabbis that they get to connect with in Israel. There is a very, very small rabbi to student ratio and these rabbis are dedicated to these boys' lives and to help them build and see where they can improve themselves and become much better people and connect to Torah, connect to Israel, and connect to our heritage. We believe in connecting to the land of Israel. And to, to connect to the land of Israel, we need to explore the land of Israel. But we don't just tour it. We tour it with a Tanakh. We tour it with the heritage of our forefathers. And we open the Tanakh as we walk that land. And we read about the passages where our forefathers walked on that same steps. Our students enter back into their careers with a new and renewed vigor. But in addition to going into their careers, they're committed to learning Torah and they're committed to our community values. They come and they advance their learning in many different programs and they actually galvanize those around them. There have been students who came back and actually built institutions. There have been students and some of our students decided they actually spent time and they joined the IDF. I believe Jews from all, all over the world should be more involved in Israel. We always talk about Kiddush Hashem, we talk about Tikkun Olam, and that again makes us so proud and uh, representing Israel and being Jewish. When I came into Flatbush High School, um, my world opened up to different kinds of Jews and to the Israel, the state of Israel. My daughter Jeannie was in uh, Flatbush and Rabbi Besser, I knew from my eighth grade in Mag and David, he used to come as a guidance counselor. Jeannie became his right arm in the office doing things and helping him. And I came into school one day and he said to me, Susan, I have a dream. I want to go do chesed in Israel with families. So I said, oh, that, that's nice, you know. He said, but I, I really want to, I want to go this year in January and I want to take Jeannie. I said, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I'll talk to Jack, I don't So I said, no, but if I take Jeannie, I need you because it was the height of the intifada and we can't take students without parents. So I need you to come. I'm saying, oh my gosh. You know, like, of course I'm dying to come, but I have three other children. What am I going to do? He said, maybe Jack will take them to Disney. So I come home and I say to Jack, Rabbi Bessa wants me to come to Israel with him and Jeannie and a group of people to do chesed and I want to go. Could I go? Would you take Joyce and Morris to Disney? And he said, guess so. And that's it. The first chesed mission was 2002. We were 28 people. We were visiting terror victims in their apartments. 
we were visiting them in hospitals. The Chesed mission is an annual trip that started originally with families going to Israel to do Chesed during winter break. We visit and bring chizuk and celebrate all the organizations in Israel and help them as we could with merchandise and donations. And more than that, we say thank you. I think the, the, um, the highlight in my mind, um, looking back at all these years, is um, I'm so proud of the high school children. They come back home, they appreciate their brothers and sisters and their parents. And of course, they've now uh, been touched in ways that can, they can never be touched back here in Brooklyn. I feel like it's not only um, uh, changed our family, but of course it's definitely changed the community. It's taken chesed to a whole nother level. I, I do sometimes tell the kids before we leave to be aware, because whatever they like to do in Israel, there's some kind of spin-off of it to do here. If they like Yad Lakashish and they like connecting with older people, they could go visit the seniors here. You know, if they like visiting hospitals, there's always hospital visits to be done here. And then we have the special children's center, so that's correlating to a lot of places we go to in Israel. So I tell them, don't only let this be a week, but take something you love and continue. Continue to do it, because that's something to take with you forever. I was drafted to the Israeli army when I was um, 17, almost 18. Served there uh, for two years. Met my husband there during those years. What inspired me to serve in the Israeli army was the time that I spent at Boston University. Um, it was in the late 80s, early 90s. It was the first time the pro-Palestinian movement was really getting going. I was a political science major and I focused on the Mideast, and the more I learned about it, um, the more I felt that I wanted to do something after college uh, for Israel, and many of my friends were doing the same thing, so um, I decided if I was gonna do it, I was gonna go to the Army. The inspiration for uh, starting the iLead program was really multifold. I had the experience uh, in the Army that was a tremendous development period for me as a person and also my awareness and my love for Israel and um, it was something that I felt uh, was missing for our community kids and I thought if we could ever have a program like this like the army without the danger uh, and still maintain the growth elements of it and the bonding with Israel and the greater Jewish people um, that it would really be a win. Eyelid is a program for community kids between their junior and senior year of high school uh, where they go off to Israel as a group, a maximum of 45 kids from sort of all different sectors of the community. Um, and they go through a challenging program where they're kind of roughing it. They spend some time in the army, spend time in the field. Uh, they don't spend time in hotels. Um, and they get to interact with all different levels of society, secular, religious, uh, political, apolitical, left, right, uh, we kind of let them draw their own conclusions at, at the end. Once the I-Lead pioneers come home, I think that they have a deeper appreciation for the challenges that Israel is facing. In the 10 years I-Lead's been running, we've had now over 400 graduates. You can see the difference uh, that they make in the community. I can't talk about I-Lead without talking about Shiloh Plesser, who was my partner uh, in starting the program and Richie Shalmi, who's been running the program for, for many years. So Jeffrey he has a vision that seems odd to everybody around him, uh, but he is very consistent and he works very hard at it. Um, and he just proves to people around him, me, that uh, ideas like uh, I lead are not just a dream, their reality. One of my mentors happens to also be the founder of the center, Morris Bailey. Uh, he's been a tremendous inspiration uh, to me and my work, uh, not only for Israel, but in the community in general. And um, I look up to him greatly, and he's, uh, he's a giant. And uh, if people knew even, you know, one percent of what he actually does, uh, they would be amazed.
My grandparents were born in Israel pre-state. They came here in the 20s, but they kept that connection with Israel always very strong. They kept the relationships, the friends. They visited often. So it was always growing up part of our identity. My family, my cousins, we all felt a very strong connection to Israel. My love for Israel really began on my honeymoon. That was the first time that I visited. And uh, from there it just grew every time we went to Israel and celebrated family affairs, functions, bar mitzvahs. It just deep-rooted love. A few years ago, Shiloh Plesser, who runs iLead and a good friend of the community, he approached me with an idea about partnering with some young Israeli couples that are working the land. It was a small idea at the time, but some few guys got involved. And before you knew it, we are 20 families that have partnered with a, a winemaker and an olive farmer. They got some capital, uh, building the business, exporting. These farmers, they're living in pretty difficult conditions because they're in a startup situation. Uh, on farms, they have to worry about Arabs coming down, trying to cut down the trees and they don't have a lot of business experience. So when people from the community come to visit and they know that we're partners with them, investing in their families, in their futures, it gives them a lot of chizuk. It's very meaningful for us. It's a way for us to connect uh, on another level. It's uh, meaningful and it is uh, wonderful. We want to see them grow. We're looking for other opportunities and we expect a lot of success. When my son came to me and said he wanted to go to the army, I opened the door and I said, the world is for your taking. I thought it was a great idea for him. It's not for everyone and um, I knew he would flourish there. Joseph joining the army was the best decision he ever made. He signed up for a year and a half and I remember getting the call one day and he said, Dad, I'm going in for three years. I said, Joe, you, you know what you're doing? You, you sure, you sure? He says, yes. I said, I trust you. And uh, it was really the best move. My great, great grandfather was Yosef Ben Nun. He was chief rabbi in Yafo in the late 1800s. And here we are five generations later, and it's my son Joseph Benin who moved back to Israel. It's uh, coming full circle in a way, and I am sure that my grandparents would be very proud. You know, people ask me all the time, how do I feel about my son living in Israel? And I think it's the greatest thing, and God willing, we'll all be there one day. There was a tipping point in uh, 2003, 2004, during the Second Intifada. At that point, I made a decision that we had to make a much more serious commitment to the country and literally put something at risk. We have a beautiful privilege of having a hotel in Israel and we, uh, we love to go as often as we can and just bring the kids with us and just the memories that we create there. We've been there for many bar mitzvahs, my, my three sons, my grandson, bat mitzvahs for my grandchildren and the memories are just unforgettable. And my advice to all of us and to the people in our community who feel a very special and real love for Israel is to make Israel a daily part of their lives. Whether it be a serious, ongoing chesed involvement, which means that each and every day you're sending an email, you're on a phone call, or it be a business involvement, all of these areas of expression connect us and enable us to make Israel like we have Torah, is part of our lives every day and Hesed is part of our lives every day. Israel is, should be the same and it can be today more than ever before by identifying an area of involvement and pursuing it to the extent where it requires ongoing, hopefully daily interaction. It's essentially extremely important now more than ever in my opinion uh, to have an Israel life to be invested there, to have something at risk. We're living in extraordinary times. We have the great blessing of being alive at a time when we have a Jewish government back in the state of Israel that's vibrant and successful, where we have a, a land that's blossoming as the Nevi'im described it. So when you put all that together and you think about being alive at this time, it means there's a great opportunity to be part of this spectacular thing called Israel.
When my daughter Sylvia came to me a number of years ago and uh, said that uh, she and Moshe wanted to move to Israel, I immediately answered her that I would support her. And although it happened to be a difficult time in business, it was 2010, the market had just collapsed. We found her the most beautiful home in a beautiful area to do everything we could to enable her to do what really essentially we'd all love to do. It's uh, painful and difficult. The separations are very hard. Our lives are built around family. Uh, every time we leave, we uh, make the commitment that we won't cry and then we begin to cry. And typically, each time we cry harder than the time before. So it's very difficult, but she's building a spectacular life. Her children are doing extremely well. Having a daughter living in Israel is definitely not easy. Uh, but she is so happy, she's living her dream, and I'm very proud of her. So in the beginning of 2013, Sam Sutton and David Hittery came over to me in shul and suggested that I get involved in APAC. I told them I had no idea what APAC was. Uh, they didn't have a lot of information on it either, but they said that it's a really important organization that the community is not at all involved and that I should start getting involved. APAC is a lobby organization. They work with all members of Congress, 435 members of Congress and the 100 members of Senate. And they work to strengthen the U.S.-Israel relationship. So Jack went to policy conference and was blown away by the pro-Israel work that APAC does. And then uh, the next year I brought a few friends with me and after that a few more friends and year after year, we started to grow, and uh, the community today, we just came back from conference, and we were close to 400 people attending. She spoke a lot about something called Iron Dome, and at the time, we hadn't heard of it. And she explained to us that it was a defense system that APAC had just gotten for Israel. We didn't know what it was or what it did. We just knew there was a lot of excitement that America had given Israel the money to create this program. Uh, fast forward a couple of months, that summer we were in Israel for my daughter Yola's bat mitzvah and it was just something that we always kind of take for granted. We go to Israel on happy occasions to celebrate. It's a place of celebration for us and for a lot of the community and we were there that summer and I was on the beach in Tel Aviv with my children uh, just spending the day and all of a sudden a siren went off and it's hard to get off the beach. Uh, by yourself, but for sure with children in tow. And Jack and I grabbed the kids and started to run. And that's when we heard a boom, like just this sonic sound. And then we heard a second sound. And what that sound was Iron Dome knocking the rocket out of the sky. And I looked at my children and I said, guys, that was Iron Dome. And that's what APAC does. And we were hooked from then on. One of the biggest challenges we're facing today is the partisan nature of politics. Uh, you know, if you're a Republican, then everything with the Democrats is wrong. And if you're a Democrat, everything with the Republicans is wrong. And the only way that we succeed is by having Congress as a whole, both Republicans and Democrats, in a bipartisan way, approve the bills on behalf of Israel. We can't get the $3.8 billion a year without a bipartisan effort. It's amazing to see the community this involved in politics and this involved in Israel, it's inspiring what we've built in such a short time. We very much believe in the importance of the state of Israel and how much strength it gives us, even living here, to know that we have the state of Israel, how important that is for us and our children. My earliest memory of helping Israel was when I was maybe nine or 10 years old, and we used to have these um, Coupot to go ahead and collect money. And I would go to uh, Bay Parkway and the 67th Street by the bank and wait on the corner so people could go ahead and give me money for the state of Israel to plant trees and to help the poor. Many years back, maybe in the 70s or the 80s, um, they approached me, the Israeli uh, people, and they said, listen, there's two groups, the Sephardics and Ashkenaz. And Ashkenaz people, they're getting the lion's share of the money coming out of the country. The Sephardics, what they're doing is they're getting pittance, basically. They're not really getting their fair share. 
So we gave birth to the Shas party in 1982 in Deal, in my backyard. And all the dignitaries came from Israel. I organized with uh, Ralph Towell, uh, Jonah Cash, Joe Bijo, all this group of people to come, the rabbinical people and the lay leaders. And we buoyant them to give them the first big push to go ahead and form this Shas party. And from then till today, they've gotten hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars because of our efforts in the 80s. Over the years, it's always been my honor to host so many dignitaries and rabbis from Israel. I'll never forget in the 90s, we hosted Shadon. He was in our house and uh, we made a beautiful lunch. And one thing that I admired about him is before he left, he went into the kitchen, he asked for all the housekeepers, and he thanked them for hosting. I remember very clearly we had Rabbi Kaduri on a Shabbat. There was a priceless scene. He slept in my bed, and Rabbi Kassin slept in my husband's bed, and they were face to face sleeping in the afternoon, on Shabbat afternoon. That was a priceless picture. Two angels. Yom Ma'at is the day where everybody feels connected to the land of Israel. Atzma'ut, Yom Ma'at means independence. It comes from the root Otsem. Otsem means strength, the strength. So Israel today, in its position is the strongest country maybe in the world and in all, in all fields. So we feel that the center did a tremendous job in Yom Ha'atzma'ut, promoting it and showing the importance what it means to have that day and celebrate that day as a, as a, a day for, in, in, to memorialize. It started back with Abraham, got thrown into the kitchen. To tell him Eliakol, through the trickery of Lavan. Living down in Mitzrayim, two ten and counting. Working every day and night. Bechomeru Beni Vaishma Hashem Nakatam Vaishkorotanu Mezer Makot Bekriya Suf Kehere Vain We were Bene Cholim Ala Nisim Ve Ala Purkan Ala Kvurot Ve Ala Chuot Shasita Lamotenu in the city of Shushan,
על הניסים ועל הפורקן, על הגבורות ועל התשואות שעשית לבותינו בימים ההם בזמן הזה. על הניסים ועל הפורקן, על הגבורות ועל התשואות שעשית למותנו בימים ההם בזמן הזה, בימים ההם בזמן הזה Hi, I'm Elliot Brandt, APAC's Managing Director for National Affairs. And before I begin, I just want to say a few thank yous. Thank you to Jackie and Regine. Thank you to Ricky. Thank you to Joey Shami and to Stephen Hittery. Thank you to so many of you for all the work that you do in the Sparta community and in your partnership with APAC. In these days of Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaTzma'ut, as we remember and celebrate, I am reminded of one of the most powerful speeches I have heard in a very long time. A religious Zionist woman, Tehillah Friedman, freshman member of the Blue and White Party, took to the well of the Knesset, and in her first speech, she talked about the miracle that is Israel and how fragile Israel is and the cost of Israelis being divided. It's an unbelievably powerful speech. There's one moment I can't get out of my head. She talks about the fact that her grandparents never could have imagined a world with a Jewish state. And then her father and her father-in-law, who were paratroopers and liberated the old city, so that she could walk the streets of Jerusalem and sometimes forget how miraculous that was. And it's easy sometimes to forget that we live in times of miracles. But if we were in Israel, On that night of Yom HaZikaron, at 8 o'clock at night, a siren would sound. And the next day, the siren would sound again. And everything would stop. And for those who've lost loved ones, either to war or terror, either in defense of Israel or just because they were Israeli, for those who've lost loved ones, the siren never stops. For those of us who live in the United States, we have a different challenge. How do we make sure that we hear that siren at all? I don't have anything to say to the Sparta community about how to be committed Zionists or lovers of Israel. You are some of the most committed anywhere in these, in these United States. But I do have something to add. We have got to make sure that we are all engaged in one of the greatest ways of protecting the state of Israel. And that is making sure that America, with its politics and its policies, never lets Israel be isolated in the world. We have got to find a way to come together, Democrats and Republicans, progressives and conservatives. We've got to drop our labels and come together and make sure that all of us are involved in the process where American policies can help protect the Jewish state. If we do that, If we can stand together and engage politically, then Israel won't stand alone. If we make sure that the greatest superpower in the history of the world stands with the Jewish state, then we can fully remember and commemorate Yom HaZikaron and celebrate Yom HaTzma'ut. Thank you. The young men and women you are about to hear from represent the future of Israel's involvement and activism in our community. They are role models for our young adults and they give us all a great sense of hope and promise for what is to come. They bring to life values and priorities that they've learned from studying in our beautiful yeshivot. Alongside their teachers, rabbis and administrators who have nurtured and encouraged their love and connection to the state of Israel. I have a tremendous amount of gratitude towards Mag and David um, for everything they gave me and everything they helped me develop into as a young leader. Hala Yeshiva has really done a good job of instilling myself and all the other students 
with a deep love for Israel over the years. So Bar Kai and Flatbush both definitely fostered a sense of Zionism. Mag and David Elementary and High School build the foundation of Chesed in my life. They always taught us to take the initiative and give back to people, whether it's in our community or beyond. Bar Kai really helped foster my love for Israel and set me in the right direction for my future. One of the reasons I'm now serving in the IDF has got to be because of Bar Kai Yeshiva. Hillel has always brought in different kinds of speakers that always talk about the importance of Israel and how we need to hold it so close to our hearts. The one main thing about Barakai is that they bring in families and Banacha from Israel, so they are a school that's always incorporating Israel in everything that you do. When I went to Mag and David High School, I could always remember them bringing in soldiers that really inspired us um, to share about their stories, what they've gone through. When I was a student in high school, Mag and David really shed light upon Israel and the positivity of Israel and the Jewish nation and it only pushed me even more to go and combat anti-Semitism and show the love and the peace of the Jewish nation of Israel. A couple of years ago I was in a meeting with young adults. We were discussing how we wanted to make an impact in the world. We felt that we were giving back to people here and we wanted to branch out to different communities. In the summer of my sophomore year I went to on an Israel program for five weeks. Summer 2019 I spent a month in Israel on the ILEAD program. At the end of my year in Israel at Moresh Yerushalayim, I visited Poland with a few of my friends. Um, we really saw all the turmoil and destruction that happened there. I drafted to the IDF in April of 2018. I drafted to a weapons instructing course and then I followed on to be a sniping instructor. I am uh, part of the young leadership group of United Hatzalah of Israel in Brooklyn. I often get asked why, why I'm serving in the IDF, why, why did I draft? And one of the answers is the love for Israel. While I was in Israel for the year, you really felt a strong connection to Israel and uh, a need to, to service the country. We were introduced to Innovation Africa, which is an Israeli organization that installs water um, in villages in Africa for people that don't have. Next thing we knew, we had a group of 20 young adults booked and ready to go to Africa. My dad is partners with Harry Ajmi, and uh, Harry was an active member of United Hatzala, a big philanthropist, obviously. And he uh, had told me and my dad that Ellie Bear was coming in from Israel. So I'll never forget it, it was four years ago. We joined him Friday night and on the way home, we were walking together, Ellie and myself. He told me, he said, Ralph, I want you to get involved in our young leadership. I had spent the summer in Israel and our counselor who was in the army said something that really changed my perspective. He said that Israel is not an emergency exit um, that you go through and things go wrong wherever you are in America, in Europe, wherever it is. Uh, it's the Jewish homeland and we should be there when in the best of times and in the worst of times. I've taken a very active role in APAC, where in my junior year as well, I had the opportunity to attend the Schusterman High School Summit, where it was a collection of, I think, 400 high school students from across the country, um, hearing from top APAC speakers and receiving training. From there, it just springboarded into my involvement and invitation to join the APAC National Team Board. Um, it's a group of 11 students that are tasked with working with the Leadership Development Director to set the agenda for the high school department at APAC. So when I got back from my year in Israel, I really saw that there was an onslaught of anti-Semitism. Um, I felt that there needed to be something to be done, there needed to be a change, there needed to be education. So my shooter happens to be his sister was a Bachelor in Bar Kaishi, which is the craziest coincidence I've ever heard of. This past year, I spent my gap year in Midrashat Eshel that was located inside of the old city. And it was the most amazing and beautiful experience that I've ever experienced in my life. Two months later, I'd say in around March, I got an email from Ellie that they were doing their first ever delegation to Israel. So the requirements were a little um, challenging. They asked us to raise an ambu cycle which at the time was $36,000, on top of covering the cost of the trip. I went, I approached uh, 10 community families. I told them, I said, we're gonna donate this ambucycle from the um, future and current leaders of the Syrian Sephardic Jewish community of Brooklyn. And they all um, said yes in a heartbeat. Uh, we raised the $36,000. It was the trip of a lifetime. That's really where my um, involvement began, really catapulted into what it is today. Throughout my involvement with Stand With Us, with APAC, with a wide variety of other national organizations, 
I noticed a real absence and a lack of representation in leadership roles from the modern Orthodox communities across the country. So I wanted to change that. And I did that by founding the Yeshiva Israel Advocacy Coalition. So this coalition, it aims to bring together the students from all of the modern Orthodox Yeshiva Day schools across the country to create a network for students to always have to reach out on and, and look back at for support when they enter the college campuses. So me and my friends decided to start this organization to combat anti-Semitism. We were lucky enough to be in the Old City when I was studying in Nijesh at Eshel and the corona rules were that you were only allowed a thousand meters and we were given the opportunity that in our thousand meters was the Kotel. So regardless that it was closed to the whole entire country, we were able to go every single day. Sometimes I was the only one there and it just it inspired me to help grow my love for Israel, feel connected and learn and, and pushed me to grow. Right when we were in basic training, it was the beginning of Corona, Israel freaked out a little bit. They had a statement that all soldiers are going to close 28 days, at least, bare minimum, all combat soldiers. And what happened to be, it turned out to be 40, 50 days. And so a lot of parents, these are kids that we just drafted and parents haven't seen them 40, 50 days, so everyone started sending gift bags, like it's a very nice thing. That week in Africa really changed my life. We were there for the opening ceremony and we were able to see them opening the taps of the water that we gave them and we donated. We went to a Jewish village, which was actually crazy to see. Um, we had, there was a rabbi there with the kippah. We were in shul praying with Jewish African children. They had um, there were some people wearing skirts. They were saying, Berachot. We were, we were there for an opening ceremony to install a mezuzah on the doors, which was very nice. I've never seen happier people in my life. They have nothing and it was crazy that they were able to be happy with that. I'm so passionate about United Hatzalah because of what they represent. Um, the first time I visited their headquarters, I saw a yeshiva guy with pe'ot, a white shirt and black pants, sitting next to a Muslim, sitting next to a Christian wearing a cross on her neck. Um, it doesn't get any more special than that. So I think they represent what we as Jews represent, uh, which is um, this constant yearn to give back to the world, um, constantly innovating and constantly being on the, the giving um, part of society. So I do believe that there's a lot of potential in this community, a lot of potential in the high school and college age students to really stand up and to combat anti-Semitism. So we truly feel that we could really implement different educational programs, whether it's in high school or colleges, to help combat anti-Semitism and help combat this greater goal. Almost every soldier had one, except for me because my parents are in uh, America. So one of the guys realized, he got a group of guys together and they made um, a gift bag for me and it said on it, from Mishpacha Machlakash Saim, which is from, um, from your family, the second platoon, which really made me feel incredible because they realized that my family wasn't here and they were my family uh, at this moment. Please rise for the reciting of the Hatikva. Yeah, oh, dear.